Hey everyone, Merch Hunter Ricky back, and today we're going to talk about chapter 1089 of One Piece. Wow. And let me just say, this was a crazy chapter, and I don't really want to do a chapter recap or review because what happened in the chapter is kind of like not necessarily a contained event because we you know we get the whole world reacting to this earthquake that's causing all these sorts of natural disasters everywhere. We see the hole where Luisia is left, and then we go right back to Egghead. But what I want to focus on is Emu in this chapter. Emu is a straight lunatic. Now, these mother flames or mother frame, whatever you want to call it, these are a extreme danger to the planet of One Piece. I'm just going to call it One Piece planet for now. So what's blowing my mind is that Ennis Lobby is, the, is a hole just like the Lulicidia hole that we have seen and how it's risen the, the actual like sea level across the world by about a meter. That's three feet. So I'm about five feet tall, right? Let's say Lelucia was not to be the only one of these islands to get Lelucia, right? And we get more Mother Frames, more Mother Flames, whatever you want to call it. If they do it just two more times, that's nine whole feet of water rising. And when you put it into perspective that way, that's like the size of, I think, Brook, right? That is one Brook's length of water across the entire world rising. I really think Imu aims to sink the entire planet of One Piece. And if it's not like sinking the whole planet, I think it's doing enough damage to cause the world to really rethink who's on top. Because obviously, Imu didn't do a good enough job in these last 800 years because now we're looking at the, the rising of the revolutionary army. We're looking at the Straw Hats taking over Egghead and keeping Vegapunk safe while he can research the Void Sentry with no ramifications, right? They're taking Robin to these Poneglyphs, and much to the dismay of Emu, I think Emu sees 800 years ago happening all over again, except this time, I think Emu fears that they're going to lose. The main reason I think this is because having so much as one Gorosei be active is monumental, right? Something that we have not seen ever. The first time we saw them, I think, um, was in Water 7. I could be wrong, but it's like the first time I remember seeing them when Spandem goes to ask them for a little bit of help to go interrogate Tom. And what really struck me since then is that they never leave their office, right? Shanks had to go to them in Mary Joie. They don't leave. They don't go down to the, the, the regular world. Now, clearly it wasn't the biggest deal because Jay Garcia Saturn seems pretty mundane this whole time. He is most likely going to be confident enough in either his strength or the Navy's strength, overwhelming might, to stop whatever is going to happen at Egghead. And this is the event that's going to quote unquote shock the world, right? And what I'm trying to get at is I think what Emu wants to prevent at any cost is the revelation that the world is technically under their complete and utter control. That things will never get better. That there will never be enough food. There will never be enough gold. The monthly tithe of the world, the like the Celestial Noble Tribute or whatever it's called, like that is going to keep happening and if not get higher. And if you guys don't comply, I'm going to mother frame the crap out of this planet until you are all drowning. What's another reason that kind of makes me believe this is that look how high up the red line is. The red line can clearly handle a couple more of these mother frames blasting the planet. And that's why in 1078 we see that they have a special request. The Gorosei has a request from Emu to create more of the mother frames. And because of this, York is trying to skyrocket herself into relevancy and into being a celestial dragon. And at the end of the chapter, we see how that's going to go supposedly right we don't know what's going to happen next but having control of the situation the way they do i feel like the straw hats are going to cost something great to emu and it's not going to be like oh the straw hats got completely decimated here or, oh the straw hats got a complete win here i don't see any of those happening i see a narrow escape but a total loss on the hands of the straw hats where maybe vegapunk stella dies or maybe they, they, you know, they escape, but the Sunny is completely totaled, and it'll take more than just Frankie's knowledge and some atom wood to repair it. Something along those lines is my guess. And if the Straw Hats succeed in taking Vegapunk out, along with York, and not letting the, the Celestial Dragons get their hands on York, 
who is claiming that she created the mother flame and sent it over to the Gorosei, right? If things go the Straw Hats way, Emu will lose their shit and then we will see the first steps, the first real steps to the final war. I don't think we're gonna get the final war in 10 chapters. I don't think we're gonna get the final war in 20 chapters, but I think we will see the first step next chapter with the solution of what happens at Egghead, or resolution rather. Will, will the Straw Hats win? Will the Straw Hats lose? What do you think, you know? Me personally, like I said, I don't think it'll be like a total loss or a total victory. I think it'll be a little bit of both. They'll win, but at a great cost. Maybe Stella dying, maybe the Sunny getting destroyed, something, right? But I think personally the Straw Hats will get away. Maybe they'll even punch Jay Garcia Saturn. Maybe they'll defeat Kizaru. But at the end of the day, it's a hundred ships, baby. That's so much, right? And what we can't what we can't fathom is the next thing Oda has planned. And it's making me pretty happy. I think what Oda has cooked up is a delicious crock pot of crazy nonsense that we can't even like like I said, we can't fathom this. Like this next chapter, we have no clue how it's gonna go down. I couldn't tell you if I wanted to, because I don't know. I just like I said, I think it's gonna be somewhere in the middle. Not a total loss, not a total win. It's gonna be a grim victory, you know? They're gonna get out of Egghead, hopefully, and when they do, it'll have completely ruined them. They will be utterly defeated. Maybe they'll be, you know, let's say they win, right? Let's go with that first. Let's say they win and they make it out with Stella and they make it out with the Sunny. What happens to the people who are charged with getting them, right? What's Saint J. Garcia Saturn gonna do to everyone there. Are we gonna finally see his devil fruit revealed? Maybe if not revealed during a fight with the Straw Hats, but as a punishment to everyone else, will he just kill Kizaru and everyone there? Or will Emu straight up just unleash unholy wrath upon them? Cause right now, I'm not too sure if Emu is going to be like physically very strong. I, I foresee a strong devil fruit, yes, but strong devil fruits don't always make strong fighters. Just saying. You've been chilling for 800 years. When's the last time you got in a fox, uh, a fighting <laughs> fox? I was thinking of a Davy back fight, but when's the last time you got in a fight, right? When's the last time Emu had to flex the old gun skis to actually get some work done? I don't think that Emu has been in a fight since the last time they were in the battle with Joy Boy in the Ancient Kingdom. That's that's my guess. And, you know, I don't think the Gorosei are immortal. I think that they are chosen as an elite group of celestial dragons handed handpicked by emu every time new ones need to come into place and maybe because of their extreme wealth they're able to elongate their lifespans for quite a while maybe they're tr they're able to get their hands on the opi opi no me every so often and yes maybe they do grant them immortal use surgery but we don't really have too many indicators of that other than the fact that they've never really changed their age appearance so you know there is some credence to the whole uh, their immortal theory. But I think, me personally, I think it's just Emu and the Gorosei have either like life return or something crazy going on. And I'm not saying I would be disappointed if they were revealed to be immortal, but I'm, I just don't think they are personally, because then like, what's the point in fighting them? You know, it's not that they're gonna lose immediately and die, but I feel like it, it drastically lessens the stakes for the Gorosei if they are immortal because then they could purposely just hold up in Pangea Castle and stay there and wait the situation out and you know they along with Emu would have enough longevity to just continue destroying the planet right maybe they don't have the resources to destroy the planet and that's why they want more mother frames to completely take the planet hostage to the point where Emu can finally reveal themselves maybe they no longer want to be a shadow ruler maybe they no longer trust the Gorosei. Who knows? But for the most part, what I think Emu's ultimate goal is, is to destroy the planet. to At least to a point to where the Red Line is the only relevant nation left. And if not that, like I said, to take the world hostage completely and utterly. Listen up. It's time now. You guys are just straight up my slaves. Like, no more celestial tribute because I don't need it when you're my slave. You're just going to work for me now. Everything you do, every aspect of your life will be for me or unholy death beams will rain down from the sky and blow your whole you know, island to a big hole in the ground and then we will see another rise in ocean level. 
and the rising of the ocean level is something that cannot be overstated or understated it is very dangerous like the fact that they want more mother frames totally indicates that they know this will happen also um whoop slaps face just kind of like at, at the very end of everything happening across the world when they show whoop slap again he doesn't look scared he looks like is it happening again this is awful you know maybe he was there the first time the water level rose maybe you know any's lobby is like some people have been saying all day today the site where god valley happened or maybe it was just the first major threat eradicated way back when ancient kingdom maybe that's where they lost their battle and then you know that would give credence to a lot of people's theories notably uterons you know one piece is at the bottom of the any's lobby hole but you know that's you know it's just a bunch of stuff that's like weighing on me and i'm just really excited about this chapter it was a good chapter i plan to do a full review maybe tomorrow or sunday or something like that i've taken a little bit of a slow route with content lately because i want to really start like picking and choosing the content i put on this channel and really tailoring some good videos for you guys because sometimes i feel like i get a little off the tracks like i am now for example but yeah, that's pretty much the video. I genuinely think Emu wants to take the planet completely hostage, if not just start eradicating, you know, Revolutionary Island, Straw Hat Allied Island, and start choosing who is going to live in their new world, which islands can be saved, which islands can't be saved, and ultimately make the red line the ultimate destination. So hey, look, oh, you wanna live here? Well, we saw this with Big Mom. Oh, you wanna live here? Give me your soul or die, Emu. You want to live on the red line? You don't want to get drowned by my mother frame weapon raising the sea level every time I shoot it off and eradicate an island? It's cool with me. Be my slave. And that's some scary stuff, you know? I genuinely think that's the ultimate goal of Emu is to finally take over the planet and finally be able to just come out of the shadow, say, hey, I'm Emu. I've been running this shit for 800 years. I plan to run this shit for 800 more years. Here's my Gorosei. Some of you know them, some of you don't. Well, guess what? I'm going to take the world hostage. I'm going to drown you all. I'm going to eradicate islands. And I'm going to raise the sea level very high. So high, in fact, that the red line is the only safe place left. And if you want safe passage, you just got to serve me for life. Anyways, I'm Merch Hunter Ricky. That's been the video. That's the idea. I hope you like it. If you have anything to say, drop it down below. Anything else to add, I would greatly appreciate it. Subscribe if you made it this far if you haven't already, and I will see you guys in the next video.